Hello, everyone. This is the Easy Allies podcast. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us this week, Ben Moore. Hey! Daniel Bloodworth! Hello. Brendan Jones! Yeah! And Ian Hink! <laughs> that fraction of a second where I forgot Brandon's name. <laughs> is that, I think that's the first time that's happened. It's all right. Th- that guy. I yeah. made eye contact. It's like, oh, that's Brandon. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens to me a lot. Yes, yeah. it happens. All the time. And it doesn't mean you don't care about the person. Like, my parents forget my name all the time. Right. That yep. never happens to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play Recruit Me. This is where patrons of Easy Allies submit RPG characters to join our party. This submission comes from Y2Kyle89. I am a penguin harpy detective. Hunting the Phantom Thief, the Rouge Rogue. And by the way, I had to look it up. Like, Phantom Thief doesn't necessarily mean I'm from Persona 5. Right, right. I was like, is this a Persona thing? I was like, no, Phantom Thief is Gentleman Thief, basically. That's what that means. Got it. A little hostile. Yeah, I was at first hostile. A little little hostile there. I'm a crack shot, a master of lockpicking, and pretty good at disguises. The Rouge Rogue has stolen my ontological inertia, meaning if no one is around to observe me, I will stop existing. <laughs> my name is Maria Pesaro. Would you have me join this party? This is the one that I like because it's it's a win-win. So like we win if they're in the party, and then if just just so happens that none of us look at this person and they go away, then... I've decided, know, no Jones, no that's not fair anymore. So one rule I'm adding is that, like we have to pay them experience even if they die. And so every time we add a new member to our party, uh-huh. we're sharing our experience points with them. But also, like, if they die, those experiment, experience points go to their family or something. Oh, okay. Because I'm, I'm sick of you being like, if they die, they die. We're fine. I'm just... I'm just well, I mean, I said that, and then these people continue to write yeah. entries. Yes. So it's not my fault that they're giving me an out. New know, rule! All right, all right. You lose an experience points for every new recruit. I enjoy requiring you to think up new rules, Kyle. So I was thinking about this one in bed last <laughs> night. I was thinking about this ontological inertia. And obviously, I refuse to believe that this person hasn't had somebody, like, never falls asleep and, like, just, like, they would just die, right? So here's the thing. Uh, if there's another person in the same room sleeping okay. who could subconsciously hear their own breathing, you're fine. Oh. You're not going to disappear. Like, you don't need somebody watching you sleep. At all times. Like, you won't disappear. Uh, if you go to the bathroom, you can just have a conversation with the person with the door closed. Oh uh, you will continue to exist. Like, the person doesn't need to be sitting in the room watching you. So, it's like, there's there are rules. Can you like, get it a can cat? work out. Sorry? Can you just get a cat or a dog? No. Why not? Like, the cat could stop looking at it. It most likely will. <laughs> yes. And then, and then you would lose that ontological. They adventure. had me at Rouge Rogue. I was sold on that. Because we have a new enemy. We have a new side quest. Yeah. Well, and that's just a killer name. Mm -hmm. Really good. Okay. Ben, how do you feel about this? I love this. Oh, okay. I think they have a sense of humor, Mm -hmm. and I think they'd be willing to joke about themselves. I don't detect a sense of humor from Maria. (laughs) Kyle, (laughs) you asked me how I felt? Yeah. (laughs) This is how I feel, Kyle. This is a penguin harpy. Yeah. Did you know the Hmm. funniest animals are penguins? That's a fact. Mm, They're very funny. They're very funny. (laughs) Ian, how do you feel about Maria? Oh, I'm all in, baby. Wow, I think we're all in on Maria. Blood, you're in too? Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Blood okay. answered that like, what? Yeah. Uh, Maria Passaro, we will find out if you survived at the end of this podcast. Can uh, we put people on watch? Sorry? We got plenty of party members. We can put people on watch. Yeah. Yeah, like, like hey, I just need you, like, I just need you to go like get something from the woods. Like, somebody had this buddy system at all times. Yeah. Steve, just hang out. Yeah. Uh, please begin corrections music. Steam already reports sales data to NPD. Uh, what what Steam allowed is that individual publishers can now be public about how they're selling on NPDs. Mm. Ah. I made a misstatement last week. Uh, Quake Champions is alive. It's uh, un- the new Unreal Tournament I got confused with. That is very dead. Oh, oh okay. okay. It's funny. You can buy it on the Epic Store, even though they're not working on it anymore. They're like, we'll still let you buy it, brah. Well, isn't it free to play? Whatever. You can download it off the Epic Store. Um, <laughs> what? Corrections on the correction. Yeah. Rocksteady, Rocksteady did say that the Arkham Knight was not Jason Todd. So they're, they've known to be a little dishonest ahead. Okay. You know, because they, so they could st- it could still be Superman, Jones. Right. There's still people who haven't played Arkham Knight yet. 
says me. No, no, no. <laughs> the guy no, who's, no, 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 no. I don't care. It. Like, okay. that is such a bad spoiler. Like, if, right. you, if you did a bad job with your spoiler. I'm not saying it's a good one. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> Arkham Knight is Jason Todd. Oh, jeez. It's him. Are you surprised? Are you shocked? Um, Easy Allies podcast. The Spiteful podcast. Yeah. Wow. Um, apparently, turning your age, age to 99 in Dead or Alive actually did not make the breast physics more active. Oh, okay. This was just a misconception me and my friends had. <laughs> and I, th I wonder why. If it, I wonder because maybe I was you trying just, to think of why. You just and, outed yourself, you purr. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, why? Uh, what's it called? Le Leisure Suit Larry. Right, there was a thing where if you put your age in, you got more access to dirtier things. Was there a period of your life where, like, this was a test that you had for games? <laughs> it was a test. So that's how they did it. You would enter in your age, and then it would give you trivia that someone of your age would know, and me and my friend always failed. Because it'd be like, I don't know, like, who was the president in this year? We're like, ah, Reagan? Like, <laughs> nope, sorry, kids. Like, Damn. oh. <laughs> so anyway... Putting your age in 99 does not affect breast physics. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people love Donkey Kong 64. They were not hearing all of the, the trash that we were giving it. Didn't even know it existed. You did not know Until Donkey Kong well 64? well after that gen. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay. Wow. I haven't played Donkey Kong 64 since it came out, but uh, also not a fan. <laughs> yeah, same, same. I, I missed it. But our community loves it, so. Cool. I straight missed it. Uh, it Jones. Fun. If I said Malakili, would you know who I'm talking about? Malakili. Mm -hmm. No. That is the Rancor Caretaker. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Do you know Jeff? <laughs> End correction music, please. <laughs> uh, we have an update, a really fun update, before we get into the news this week, uh, because we talked a lot about the Epic Game Store last week. And here, as of... Our recording of the podcast last week, we had that Game Informer interview with Tim Sweeney. Here was the scoop on exclusive games on the Epic Games Store. The question asked was, what sort of exclusive games are going to come to this platform? Is exclusivity something you are thinking about? Tim replied, Epic's own games are exclusive to the Epic's ga Epic Games Store on PC and Mac, and will sometimes fund dis developers to release games exclusively through the store. That's all we knew as of Tuesday of last week. Since then, we have a lot of Epic Game Store exclusives. Here we go. Ashen PC, right? They, they, you cannot get that on Steam anymore. If you're looking forward to Xbox Play Anywhere, sorry, buds. You can't do that anymore. It's not on Steam. Yeah, something uh, weird happened with that game, man, because Microsoft were the ones showing that off. I know. It debuted in their own press conference. Yeah. Like, I was in the Microsoft booth to play that game. And I don't... It's still on Xbox. It's, it's still, still on, on Xbox. Xbox, but yeah. it's not It's not getting the normal, like, Xbox, like, treatment. You know, like the under their umbrella kind of thing. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, someone in the comments was like, Kyle knew that whole time. I saw Ashen on the rundown. I thought it was going to be, you know, another Xbox thing. Who was, like, showing it. Did not know that was going to be an Epic Games thing. Uh, Hades? Hades is Supergiant's new right. game. Uh, that is exclusive to the platform for a year. Uh, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, exclusive uh, for a year. Early access, though, right? Yes. For Hades. You know what? Hades, right. they said at least a year. They said early access. It's cool. going to be at least a year that they're exclusive And that's for. a first for Supergiant, to do something early access? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, because it's like a roguelike, because it's mm -hmm. it's not as, as defined as like a, a, what's Lady Sword called? Transistor. Transistor. Transistor, thank you. Uh, you threw me for a loop with Lady Sword there. <laughs> it's actually Boy Sword and Lady Wielder. Lady Wielder, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's just always oh, talking to her. Come yeah, on, Sword. Yeah, I don't like him. Uh, Genesis Alpha Transistor's 1. Transistor's a good game. Exclusive. Journey, PC exclusive. Hello Neighbor, Hide and Seek. You got that exclusive. Super Meat Boy Forever, exclusive for a year. So these are timed exclusives. All of them that we a know about. A lot of them are recognizable, too. Yeah. yeah, man. Super Meat Boy Forever being a timed exclusive is... Crazy. Crazy to me. Yeah. And that so, is crazy to me. And and it, it is weird. You know, there was there were other complaints about the Epic Game Store, like no cloud saves. It's like, they will add cloud saves. Count on it. Yeah, but, GOG didn't have cloud saves at first. Yeah, they will come. Yeah. But, like, these are exclusives for a year that were not apparent when they announced the store. Like, mm -hmm. And so there were games that, some of it, in some cases, were removed from Steam to be put onto this store. Power grab. Yeah. I saw a developer straight up say, like, Oh, I wish I could remember right now who it was, but they were like, we're taking it off of Steam to hopefully, like, make Steam 
follow this revenue share deal. I think it was Team Meat. I think they said yeah. we want to we want to send a message to yeah. Steam. They were like sending a message. I, yeah, I don't blame them. I really don't. You don't what? I don't blame them. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool yeah. that they're in a position to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, we got a lot of flack for that. You know, a lot of people disappointed uh, that games that had already been announced are suddenly removed from Steam. Um, and yeah, that's nuts. They they did spend a lot of money to get their own little exclusive bunch as they launched their store. Crazy. Let's talk about news. Do you all remember my favorite way to start a podcast? <laughs> yes. What is it? It's been so long. Several I don't remember. game announcements. Several game announcements. <laughs> Several, baby. We had the Game Awards last week. We had the Kind of Funny Showcase last week. We got game announcements out the wazoo. Uh, here's the thing. Normally, if we had a list of game announcements, we'd play like uh, 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 Rake the Significance. We're not playing that this week because there's just too much. And like there's some things that I want to give more time than other things. And so we're basically we're going to cover the big ones, the big game announcements that happened last week. You're ranking the significance. I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the reins of the significance. And then we're going to go through some others. Like if you want to talk about them, we will. Stop me and say, Kyle, I, we got to talk about this. I'm really excited about this game. Otherwise, we have to move on just to make this podcast happen. I'm ranking the significance. Yeah. I think the biggest game announced last week, correct me if I'm wrong, Mortal Kombat 11. Hard to disagree. I, yeah. think, I think that's a really big deal. Mortal Kombat 11 was announced last week historically announced how's that historical i've never seen an award show where an award was halted to announce a game and then went back to the award <laughs> what happened uh ed boone came out and was about to give best best sports mm -hmm. i'm in the audience of the game awards and right as the the thought goes through my brain why is ed boone giving out the <laughs> award for sports yeah you know lights go out lightning comes in and then there's the the mortal Kombat logo an extremely gruesome trailer uh and they that was w without a doubt the most excited that uh with the exception of um uh, the smash reveal. Oh, like, yeah, no, we'll get there. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Exploded. I mean, that was a really, really great, the perfect audience, and uh, everyone was there for it. Yeah, it was fun because there was a there's a certain oh when Scorpion breaks through the the uh, the the slate for a best uh, sports or racing game, and another oh when lightning <laughs> comes when it's, the lightning reveals a logo that's full roar, and then. Individual roars when when a, like a skull was smashed. Then you get more live because you know I love a live audience. I love that they do things like this live. Uh, when you when you know Raiden is revealed, you get oh, and then finally when you see the classic scorpion skin, it's another ah. Oh! And so it was just kind of that. It was a good trailer because it consistently had oh moments. Yeah, it was so gloriously violent. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to remember all of the violent parts because there were stabbings and beheadings, skull uh, smashes. Just scorching the body mm -hmm. and like seeing the spine really stuck out to me. Yeah. He kicks the head back and then like the blade goes through the head and blood just goes flying out of the back of the head. That's like the one I keep seeing the gif on Twitter over and over mm -hmm. and over. Yeah. It's weird because I feel like Mortal Kombat 11 has been rumored forever, and so on some level, we were just kind of waiting for it to happen. Yeah. yeah. But I think the way that they did the reveal with the award, it was still so exciting and still so much fun to watch. Um, yeah, and just like the arc of Mortal Kombat since 9, where it, it's kind of in a position for me personally, and I think for a lot of people, just because it's been so successful, where it's like, oh yeah, I'll play that, I'm looking forward to that. Um not as much curiosity and what comes along with curiosity doubt as I maybe would have had, you know, years ago for a new Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of, I don't know, I think in the PS2 era and maybe yeah. it's like it kind of lost something, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it got like in a weird way dorky, I think it really lost its edge and for, somehow that game had edge. In, in an audience who's all like Game Awards, pretty serious show, right? Pretty serious vibes. Obviously, the trailers were allowed to be goofy and silly, like the bird pulling the the grenade pin out. Um, but like, still got that audience riled up simply through violence, <laughs> simply through just two men smashing each other with superpowers. And like, really, all the credit in the world to Netherrealm because when I think about Mortal Kombat, it feels very defined to the '90s, mm -hmm. like a, a series built on over-the-top violence. You just think after a certain point, the sort of mass appeal would run out, but they have found ways of keeping that relevant and exciting and fresh and cool. A great point. And I think that's awesome. Because 90s, 90s Scorpion shows up. Yes. That is 90s <laughs> and it's Scorpion. exciting. Yes. Yeah. That is insane. Uh, uh, April 
uh, 23rd is the release date for this game. But they're having a community reveal event, which they're trying out, and I think that's pretty cool, next month. Yeah, January 17th is that thing, where we'll have lots more details. Mm -hmm. I also love the, the, the flip on the tagline from Mortal Kombat 10, who's next, mm -hmm. to Mortal Kombat 11, you're next. Love yes, that. Jones. Love that. Mm -hmm. That's total. That's total Jones observation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a good tagline. Uh, the logo is sick. I mean, they make the, the eleven into like parts of the M and the K. It just looks nice. It's a nice, clean logo. Gotta say. And hats off to Ed when it went back to him. It was like, oh, that was weird. Anyway, the award for best sports game. Just mm -hmm. you know, acting chops from Ed Boone. Yes. And Love no it. winks ahead of time, no yeah. winks afterward. Yeah, he's, he's good. I wish more game announcements would do that, yeah. where they would have a an exciting CG trailer and then be like, hey, listen, this is when you're going to go to all the details. And yes. it feels like the perfect mm -hmm. amount of time in between those two things. And yeah. so, I don't know, it just seems good all around to me. Yeah, if you wanted more of those details, well, what we know so far, uh, platforms, it is coming to Switch. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I did hear that. Yeah. I'm very surprised by that. It was announced for the Nintendo Switch. Neat. Which is n uncommon. It's fair to say uncommon that a game is announced. Uh, we'll see if it releases the same day on the Switch. I'm skeptical mm -hmm. uh, if it will actually launch on April 23rd for the Switch. But, hey, for now, that's what's been announced. That's pretty crazy. Um, characters, only Raiden, only Scorpion, and if you pre-order Shao Kahn, uh, because that leaked on some GameStop thing. Um, GameStop <laughs> Italy, I think. Uh, and it's clearly like a render. It's clearly like that's not faked. Uh, that is very, very real. Um, pretty cool. I mean, obviously, they've always, I feel like every single Nether Realm since uh, 9 had a pre ordered character. Oh, sure. Pre order yeah. and you get this character. So, you know, it's too late to get mad at that. Also inferred that there will be a season pass, which is interesting. It's interesting for fighting games to take on that idea that we see prominently in uh, uh, Battle Royale games. And heavily, heavily implied that Mortal Kombat will take on the Injustice 2 armor system. Mm -hmm. That you're going to be customizing every piece and part of your character, um, as well as maybe moves, uh, which is interesting. Uh, oh. But if you're going to have a season pass, you need stuff like that. You need to look forward to. Oh, I need those gauntlets. You know, I need, oh, I need, I need that that fatality. And so you're working for it. You're, you're grinding for experience to build up to those things. I expect uh, online to be a big part of this game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's cool. It. I am curious though how crazy the DLC is going to get because if you think like from Mortal Kombat Nine and the two Injustice games and Mortal Kombat Ten, like they've had so many crazy characters already. Like, where do you go from here? Oh, wait, in terms of guest characters? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ninja Turtles I never saw coming, right. dude. If they can, like, tap into that amount of weirdness, I'll be excited. Yes, I agree. Though Ninja Turtles appeared in Injustice, it'd, yes. it'd be a more of a stretch for Ninja Turtles to appear in Mortal Kombat. I realize that. I get Ooh, it. Ooh, decapitating turtles. Yeah. Not what I want to see. Ooh, I do. I want to see it. Do you? Yes. Oh, Sorry, Raph. Um, let's talk about more <laughs> game announcements. The Outer Worlds... Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was officially announced. And we knew we knew that Obsidian was working on a game for, uh, what's it called again? The Private Division. This is Take-Two's, like, hey, we want to make indies as well. So uh, Take-Two had previously announced that Obsidian is making a game for them. And we're like, okay, well, let's see it. And then, I, I don't know, panel, you take this one away. What did we see? What did Obsidian present at, from their game? Characters. Okay. At, currently? Yes. Uh, a salve for a deep burning wound. Yeah, let's start with this because I think this is obvious. I think we need to talk about this. What is, what what style game is this? This this as they made very clear in the trailer. This is your Fallout fix. Yep. Yes. Uh, I don't know how person, else to say it. First person game uh, from the developer of Fallout New Vegas. It very yes. prominently yeah. in the yeah. trailer. Uh, and I watched it again. Yeah. They saved that till like your three quarters of the trailer. Normally, you know, it'd be at the beginning from the oh, creators sure. of Fallout, but they saved it for when the trailer's really rolling to say, yeah. hey, from the creator's original Fallout, developers of Fallout New Vegas. And not in a really badass kind of mood, playful, fun. Yes, uh -huh. you know, like, you're right. Remember, remember what was fun about New Vegas? You can see that here, you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah, it completely makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I think that's something that comes across, like, throughout all of it, everything in, in terms of the art style. It just looks more... Um, I don't know, like more organic in a way, more 
polished, almost not quite cartoony, but it doesn't look like it's trying to go for like gritty realism. It's it's like it's having fun with its art style. Yeah, I think that's fair because Jones said characters first. You know, like they, <laughs> I say this a lot. They had good faces, whereas Fallout games traditionally have bad faces. And so it, it was something they, they really just cut to face, 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 face. They were just showing off characters in, in, in a section. And right, Blood's right. That it is like a cartoonish style, but I think it was the right way to go. Well, faces and voices. Like, that's such a yeah. huge deal to hear a character speaking to you in a cutscene that I believe is going to be in the game the first time you see that game. Mm-hmm. That happens very seldomly in this industry. What do you mean? Uh, that they have that even done by the time marketing begins. Gotcha. It's like, oh, we, we, like, we, if we've recorded the dialogue, we haven't put it in yet. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, like, oh, did you see the story trailer? Like, that usually happens about halfway through a, a regular campaign. Got you, yeah. Finally, now we know it's happening. Finally, Aloy talks. You know, finally, you know, we, we get, a, you know, the um, mm. Cassandra or, you know. Uh, we get to see Peter from Parker. From Assassin's Creed yeah, talks, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, it's usually just kind of like. The, the tone, you see the character model, but you don't actually get into, like, lines you're going to hear in the game, you know, the story being conveyed. And that was the first thing we saw was this guy, you know, this really crazy-looking scientist guy, you know. And, and so I just think they set the tone right away, showed the engine right away, mm-hmm. um, kind of the sense of the world, the technology, um, the kind of rustic nature of it. I love the line in the trailer, this is the future, don't break it. I think yeah. that's funny. And and I, I tweeted out during the, 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 uh, during the show that I'm like, there are so many games, even like Fallout, uh, even um, Far Cry New Dawn, and, like Rage. Like, there's just a lot of like future war. Like, it's just a very dangerous genre to get into and make your game clearly defined and separated from everything else. And it felt new. It felt, it felt like something that you should be excited about. It felt I mean, like a big deal. How, how do you not have confidence in this? Because Fallout New Vegas is ten out of ten fantastic. Like play that game uh the storyline is just amazing the way they incorporate choice is just amazing and then also i feel like obsidian has shown like hey you know we made pillars of eternity one and two we have built an incredibly deep original world we filled it full of tons of interesting characters and and great lore and it's like you're fusing these two things together and the more you think about it this announcement just makes sense like they were meant to make this game yeah if you were wondering who the developers are uh that shared the you know the original creators of fallout that's tim kane and leonard boyarski are heading this project which is crazy Mm -hmm. um and yeah ben because really when i see a game like divinity i see it you know like top down i see it as like that that's the compromise right Mm -hmm. the characters have to be small because of the systems because of how many story options and there are and things like that like it can't have cutscenes because uh there'd be so many to make and so I really thought this game would probably be along those lines. I did not expect to see a first-person exploration game, uh, active combat. Right? You don't you don't pause for vats. Um, yeah. Go I, ahead. I just I get frustrated because when we talked about Obsidian uh, getting acquired by Microsoft, yeah, there was a comment that was like, they're just gonna make you know a traditional top-down CRPG, and mm-hmm. you're gonna like it. And it's like, wait a minute, like let's think about Obsidian's history here. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is a studio that has been ambitious and tried new formats and new styles of games. Yes, they've often worked within an RPG template, Mm -hmm. but all of those, a lot of their games have been wildly different. I mean, you think about Stick of Truth, you think about Alpha Protocol, you think of Knights of the Republic. Like, to expect that this studio that doesn't have a history of doing that would keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and so here it is. And we didn't just get, like, a taste of the first-person view. They didn't, like, tease it. Like, we got a lot of enemies, a lot of different guns and stuff that they were using. Like, it just just when that trailer was over, I was like, I just don't feel like anything was compromised there. I just think that was this game was ready to be shown. They had a lot of different fun stuff to show. There but was it's a nice kind of, you know, the, I think there were some lines in there that were, you know, created that when he shot the NPC, he's like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Like that might have been made just for the trailer. I don't think so, man. Yeah. So to be clear to everybody what that line was, because I really love this part of the trailer, it slows down. Like, I think it's a it's bad if we're talking about trailer momentum, but I think it's great for showing the game is you see uh, someone who works for the corporations and then someone who just lives in this town arguing. And you have a character looking at you, looking at your character, and you're holding your gun. And they're like, what are you going to do? Whose side are you going to take? You shoot the corporation guy. And then that character says, whoa, Mm -hmm. you did not have to shoot him. (laughs) And so like, that's clearly communicated to us, video game players, that we had three options there. Jones, I totally believe that's going to be in the game. Cool. Maybe not that specific, because she's like, sure. what are you going to do about... Like, I don't think that third party's there. You know, it's like... Sure. They, they, they were talking to you as a trailer viewer, whereas right. in the context of a... I've already spent 15 hours in this game, and then I meet these two people. I don't need that person there to explain that to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
but it wasn't awkward. And I think just like Mortal Kombat, I think it was fun to play to a live audience. Yes. To have them be like, whoa. Yeah. That was a crazy moment, not necessarily what was expected. It's true. I think you do make trailers a little differently if you know you have a live audience. Probably not. I, I don't know if that goes into a lot of decision making, but it does make them more fun. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, very excited for that game. That's 2019. There's oh my gosh, totally forgot about this one. Marvel's Ultimate Alliance Three. Yeah, yeah dude. Nintendo logo then Marvel logo. This is bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> this is bizarre. <laughs> so Go, weird. Blood, tell me why this is bizarre. <laughs> okay, so. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 is like back when the Xbox 360 first came out. Yes. That's the one with Spider-Man holding a uh, rope on the cover. No, I think I think Ultimate Alliance 1 was when the 360 was coming out. 2 was a little bit later, I believe. Those were both on the 360. But they were both yeah. very, still very early. Like they were like a year apart yeah. maybe. Yes. Yeah. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 yeah. years since Marvel Ultimate and, Alliance 2. And it was a spinoff of X-Men Legends, basically. Yes. Like, they started with X-Men, and then they did the Marvel games. Correct. But, you know, that was uh, what Raven Software back then, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and, uh, and Activision. Mm-hmm. double checking. And now, somehow, Nintendo is publishing, mm-hmm. and Team Ninja is making the game. Yeah. Like, what the heck? <laughs> like, how do you just pick up this franchise? That's so weird. It, it's I, like, also, I know yeah. it's like Marvel's call in right. some degree, but it's just so strange. Oh, three years apart. Almost two and a half. Read that oh. out loud, Jones. Uh, October 21st, 2006 was Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1, and September 15th, 2009 okay. was Ultimate Alliance 2. And 2006 is the second year of 360, I think? Very early, yeah. I think it's the first year. I think 2006 is the first, first yeah. year of X, the Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood, you're right. And, and also, we're in a yeah. post-Marvel Heroes world. So we did get a game that was kind of Ultimate Alliance-ish. Yeah. That was free to play. Uh-huh. And that seemed like, to, to me, when I got Marvel Heroes, it was like, okay, this is the best we're going to get. Like, right. I would love an Ultimate Alliance 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that they focused on the Guardians. Like, there's a lot of characters I'm sure people love to play as now. Uh, with the, I hope the X-Men are incorporated into it a little bit. just want to play Wolverine. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, I just want to play Cyclops. Probably will not get to. But you will, uh, Cyclops Jones. wasn't Marvel Heroes. Yeah. And uh, well, that was the thing about Ultimate Alliance. It wasn't everybody. It was only about twenty or so or, or characters. They were definitely you know it was like cool to get Moon Knight, but like there were just some weird you know people that there's no beast. So like there, uh, you know you had to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. Um, and again, just when I saw Marvel Heroes, it's like we're never getting Ultimate Alliance three or anything mm-hmm. like that. And so not only are we getting a game like that, but they brought the license back. I was like, I can't believe. Why bother? You right? would, yeah, yeah, go back to you know. I'm sure there's some people who are like Ultimate. I've never heard of that series or, yeah. you know, they're like well, teenagers it's funny now. Too, and it, they were like five. Like <laughs> the and, Team Ninja thing makes me so excited. <laughs> um, and and what you know, like one of the reasons I remember this being around when that came out because um, when I previewed the first Ultimate Alliance. Like I remember them being excited about the fact that like on the GameCube they they could do something that they couldn't do on the other systems and that was just like you just like hot swap just by plugging and unplugging the GameCube controller. Like you could just like Oh drop in. Drop that, in oh, drop right, out. Right, right. Anything, yeah. Because every other system, like you pull the controller out and it like gives this like, oh crap, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like GameCube is like, oh it's fine. <laughs> and then here is that franchise, and that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. They saved the title for almost the very, very end. Uh, basically, showing us all these Marvel characters. Started off with Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, oh, so they got an exclusive Guardians of the Galaxy game. Good for you, Nintendo. Then, nope. Uh, this is also what do we see next? Iron Man. I can't remember. I'm the second Captain one. Marvel was. In. I don't remember specifically, but I mean that would be. Uh, uh, the fourth forgiven. one was showing Wolverine because like yeah. we, we get it. We see like we're we're used to seeing these Marvel things. Like okay, we're here, we're here, we're here. Wolverine brings out the claws, takes down a Sentinel, like dives at the screen. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just like oh, everybody's here, and then you see some action shots and. The only indication you would have, I think, that this is an Ultimate Alliance game is you see red, yellow, blue, and green outlines around the characters. And so mm. you're kind of like getting some impression of what the game's going to be like. You're like, okay, all right. It still seems closer than an Ultimate Alliance game. It still seems like you're more zoomed in. Uh, and then, yeah, just the title right at the end. You For the trailer, I think. I think, that's the, you think so? They wanted to zoom in. And that's what's exciting and I think totally palatable for me on the Switch is Ultimate Alliance, even the Legends games, they're not the best looking games in the world, even Never at the been. time. Right. And right. It, it's top down. Like the, the idea was that you could mix and match these characters in any way you wanted to. That was like a first. Mm-hmm. And 
this Ultimate Alliance breaks out from X-Men, and they're like, no, we're going to have Daredevil in it now, and all these other crazy people. And so I'm totally fine with that game not looking fantastic, or, you know, um, as long as it, you know, runs well and, and you know, uh, co-op with just two people and on your Switches. Like, I have a friend Man. specifically that I'm like, you're buying a Switch. I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> I'm not just going to bring this over to your place. Like, you got to buy a Switch. we got to <laughs> play this together. <laughs> Jones, it, it totally makes sense to me too, dude. And so when you say like Nintendo, why for the Switch? Why'd you do Ultimate Alliance? Because I think you're right. I think the console itself lends itself well yeah. to this kind of game. I, It's not a personal problem for me. I'll just play it on my Switch and have a great time. Mm -hmm. But it being exclusive to Switch, I can understand being super disappointing in a way. Because like Bloodworth said... I feel like I grew up around people who got really attached to Marvel Ultimate Alliance on 360. Yeah. And it's it's a genre you don't get to see a lot of. And we haven't had a Marvel Ultimate Alliance game in like 10 years. And so if you're looking forward to that and you don't have a Switch, I can imagine that being disappointing in like a pretty reasonable way like it seems like something that should be out on everything so sure. that, it was weird activision republished it for xbox one and ps4 yeah not too long ago right mm. i wonder oh, if that right. was i wonder yeah, if that was them it, yeah. losing the marvel license or they were like let's just get these out quickly right i'm not i'm not sure what happened there but to those people ben uh, I don't see this as an Epic Game Studio thing where they're just like, well, here's money, make us exclusive. I see this as a game that was never going to happen oh, yeah, unless right. Nintendo stepped yeah. in. So it's disappointing, but don't be disappointed yeah. in Nintendo. Right, it right, sounds right. like this wouldn't have happened at all you yeah. know, if it wasn't for them. I'm just saying that there are sometimes I think, where things move to one side or the other, and I'm like, oh, no, that makes sense. But I, if you're like, ah... I'm not going to buy a Switch just for this, and I'm disappointed. I get you. I yeah. feel like that's a reasonable sentiment to have. Yeah. Also worth noting, Iron Man was 2008, 2007? 2008. Uh, the 10 year is the big thing they're, 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 they're saying this year. So yeah. it's like that was only a year before Ultimate Alliance 2 came out. And so, like, uh, Marvel's in a different place. It's <laughs> you know, in so many years later. Dude, yeah. So it'd be really interesting to see how that attitude affects if there's going to, if we're going to get, like, if these aren't the movie versions, but maybe, like, a line or two will joke, mm -hmm. you know, that um, kind of like this this uh, Marvel Spider-Man kind of jokes about the movies a little bit. A little the, bit, the, the yeah. Game. I don't even want to ruin those because those are such great. great jokes. Uh, I will say, uh, we saw the Switch logo, we saw the Marvel logo. And for maybe a full second, my mind was racing, and then what I saw was a little dis like a little disappointing from what I was expecting to see after that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, we I, we saw the Guardians first. I think we saw like Rocket, and he like looks good. It's like okay, so they're making a they're making a Guardians game. Okay. Like you, I kind of was expecting something on the level of Spider Man. This is clearly not that. Right. But as as we kind of said, it's the right thing for the platform. Was the last time Team Ninja worked on a thing for Nintendo, was it Metroid uh, Other M? That is what comes to mind. Yeah. I cannot say for certain whether or not that's true, but that's what comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, I don't know how much involvement they've had in like Hyrule Warriors and stuff from with <laughs> Koei Tecmo. Right, right, right. But that's Omega Force. Right. Team, team Ninja com is just ninja merchandise. <laughs> hey, buy some stuff, Ian. I want a sword. No, no, um, I mean like Ninja the Streamer. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. His website is Team Ninja com. Does that's he have funny. kunai? No. <laughs> oh, I'm out. I'm hey, out. <laughs> buy some kunai. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like they they've probably done some kind of supporting work on on something that is sure. lo more yeah, low yeah. key. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they were worked on Infinity. <laughs> Really? Fire Team Emblem, Ninja then? Fire Emblem Warriors. Cool. So they did contribute to that. That's yeah, funny. So I yeah. was thinking that they might have jumped in there. And, and that's too. Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, you know, some of that kind of stuff might cross into this. Like it kind of feels, you know, a little bit tied to that in a way. It's like, well, you guys take franchises and, and have characters beat, beat things up, right? You know, it's like, that's kind of what Marvel Ultimate Alliance is. Yeah. You know, it is. This is so strange, though, because. It's such a, a, a non-Japanese centric uh, franchise, you Sorry. know, because we, we learned the story about how Spider-Man came to be right. Marvel approached Sony and said, hey, take anything. Sony approached Insomniac and Insomniac said, can we have Spider-Man? And everybody said yes. Didn't did Marvel approach Nintendo and Nintendo said, give us Ultimate Alliance? <laughs> <laughs> and did they go to Team Ninja and said, Team Ninja, what do you want to make? And they said, we want to make Ultimate Alliance. We're passionate about this. I don't know. Like, that doesn't seem like that was the path to me. Right. Yeah, this is going to be a really the, interesting story. I wonder if the path was the other way around where 
they were looking for somebody to make Ultimate Alliance, mm. and they the, the negotiations just kept happening until it landed on this thing. Yeah, sure. and that's what worked out. Right, because Nintendo's like, sorry, we don't have a team for this. You know, Nintendo does have like they'll let other teams make other games. I can right. see that happening that way. Crazy I, though. Yeah, I just want to know, like, how much Team Ninja is going to be in this. Because, boy, they can get, like, so beautifully dumb with their stories. Mm -hmm. And, like, just a completely insane, over-the-top Marvel Ultimate Alliance, like, boss fights and storyline sounds pretty darn juicy to me. And, I I mean, the combat might actually be good. Right. It might actually not be, like, spam attack until your supers are ready. Like, it actually might be pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a Nintendo Direct. How weird is that? Yeah. Like, it's very weird. prominently featured, might have its own direct, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> yeah. It's a first-party game. Do you think we'll see more? So we have Spider-Man, huge success. We have this for a Nintendo exclusive. Uh, we know, you know, the Avengers game is coming from Square Enix, and presumably the Guardians of the Galaxy one after that. Are we going to see more in 2019? I don't think the Marvel train stops. I don't think so right. either. And I think it's going to keep coming out of weird spots, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just going to be like, what, you? I mean, but yeah, if they're going to keep Captain coming. That Captain Marvel movie is coming. Like, is, yeah. is that going to have something? Something it, big? It well, seems hopefully to me- we'll find out about that Avengers game in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> Sometime next year, we'll so see it. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Russo dads. Brothers booked for the Game Awards, and everybody's like, oh, they're going to show that Avengers yeah, game. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. You know, I can't say that, obviously. Jen is yeah. wrapping up, Square. Yeah. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. <laughs> E3, baby. E3. Count on it. Or maybe it'll be at the PS5 reveal in, in March. That's possible as well. Uh, next up, <laughs> Far Cry New Dawn. Oh, this is weird. What's we're not, we're not in the part where we can skip to the... Honestly, <laughs> no, I, 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 this is... We have to talk about Far Cry 5, one of the best-selling games of this year. Right. Far Cry 5 is no joke. Now spoiled for everyone who I don't know how to... Yes. Yeah. It's I great that I never have to play that game. No, yeah, you know, I don't know yeah. how it ends now. Yeah. You're good. I don't know how to feel about Far Cry New Dawn. Okay, so what is it? It is a Far Cry game set in a post-apocalyptic world with... It just... It just seems like all attitude... With nothing where I'm like excited about that attitude. I'm not saying I have a problem with its attitude or that its attitude is bad, but it just seems like it keeps shoving this attitude and there's like nothing underneath it to get me excited. Like, is this just gonna be another Far Cry game with villains that get in your face, but a storyline that doesn't resonate? And like chaos that's like fun for a week and then you drop off of? Like what's what is it? It's just it's just a lot of it's just a lot of attitude. I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. So to be clear to everyone, if you're wondering, New Dawn, uh, it that takes place... That's not a good explanation. I'm it's, sorry. It's the same map as Far Cry 5, uh, 17 years later. That I did not know. Yeah. I thought it was like 80. A 17. Oh. I just remember in the trailer her saying something like astronomical. No, nah, because that guy's still alive, too. He's like, I oh, was Oh, you're wrong. right. You're right. I yeah, thought yeah, it would totally. be the new world. Mm-hmm. I was right, but I Man, was wrong. I reviewed it. Don't even remember his name. Yeah. Joseph, I think. I oh, remember good. when Huber <laughs> saw that person in the trailer, uh-huh. and he had finished the game. Uh, he just like chuckled in like this most dismissive way, just like, <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, that's probably super lame based on what you've seen." Joseph C. <laughs> Joseph C. <Seed. laughs> yeah, not a guy I need back. And I feel bad because, like, I you know I from like from following that actor on Twitter, he was so passionate about that role oh cool and he did some crazy stuff he played a very crazy guy you know and and to their credit like he definitely was a presence in that game like i definitely felt him and and was like can't wait to take this this dude down um but now yeah getting back to this game like no no he comes back like what more do i have to learn from this guy i like I, I thought primal immediately when I saw it. I was like, oh, another primal. Okay, yeah. it was something which that was maybe also the same map. They right? had an idea: is this enough to be Far Cry Six or no? Okay, we'll just add it on to Far Cry Five because yeah. it's like in March, right? Or what? When does it come out? Something crazy? Like, uh, in months? January? Or? It, oh, sorry, I wrote that in February fifteenth. Yeah, out. Yep, so man. That's like definitely smells like primal. You know, yeah. or, and, but the thing about primal was. They had to just completely wipe the slate clean and be like... But it was we, the same we, map, too, with, with Primal, wasn't was it? Was it? Yeah, I think it was basically the same map. Like, a lot of things carried over. As four? Yeah. 
No. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Uh, it sounds floor right. Was, floor was like in the Himalayas, man. There was yeah. no, there's no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I went immediately from four into primal. There's nothing about that that I read. I mean, I, I could be corrected. Yeah, but Ian's and maybe on it's it. a lot different. We'll find out. We'll find out. But uh, yeah, it felt like a, a brand new thing. But Right. So when I say same map, like it's obviously don't expect that they just copied and pasted, right? right? Like, but like we're going to be, evolved. it's like, oh, cool. I'm building bows from the ground up. Mm-hmm. We're going to be riding animals. You know, there's all sorts of like crazy new uh, uh, prehistoric, you know, and Enemies that I'm going to be fighting, like what a neat premise, and mm-hmm. and and cool that like no one speaks English in this game. That's cool. The whole game subtitled. You know, there's just a lot. I was like, this is really neat, and a departure for a lot of stuff they're doing with Far Cry. Yeah, this is like what you add some colorful flowers and a couple new <laughs> thing. It just doesn't seem there's like a racetrack. Whoa, you they, know, like they had a they had a racetrack in there. They got vehicles in Far Cry Five. It like, does, I just don't uh, see. It just doesn't seem so far out of left field. I wasn't shocked by this. It was like oh, okay, and like you were saying, like did not establish really powerful villains. Did not really get a sense of like I see a them. camp that gets attacked and then you're running from them. So like the two sisters are you work for, you work for them, but I think they're clearly the villains. You know, yeah. I, I thought I like them. I think so. So Far Cry, according to Kotaku here, uh, article posted in 2016, uh, Far Cry Primal uses the map of Far Cry 4. It based on it. Uh, it uses the height maps, which is the type typography typography, as the basis of the map. And uh, apparently they did a very similar thing with Blood Dragon and yeah, Far Blood Cry Dragon, 3, I, yeah. South Island. Blood Dragon is great. So it's like, you know, just generally the same mountains and rivers and stuff are in the same places. Right, saving themselves some work, but yeah. like yes. we don't pick up on it. Whereas in this yeah. one, it could actually tie into the story. You know, yes. you're going to meet the it same does. people. Whereas I, in Primal, it's, you know. Yeah. I probably sound like I, I hate Far Cry and I don't. I, I've I've had some good times with Far Cry, but I feel like... If we're comparing it to Far Cry Primal, that is not good to me. I find Far oh. Cry Primal intensely boring. Oh. I find it to be an intensely boring game. <laughs> You're hurting Jones right that, now. That's fine. <laughs> that like, had a really cool premise, and right. I'm on board with what Jones was saying, but those ideas didn't really translate. It felt like all of those cool ideas were bolted on a framework that was way too familiar. Like, yeah... You're in this different environment. You're in this 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 age with spears and stuff. Why does it still feel the same? Like, why does it still feel like I'm scouting dudes in a very similar way? Why does it feel like I'm checking things off the map in a very similar way? It just wasn't wasn't as exciting or as different as the premise would indicate that it would be to me. Here's one one wish that I have. Then, in the trailer, the two sisters' eyes light up green, and I'm like, are we mutants? If we have mutant powers in Far Cry New Dawn, then we're talking. Doc Brown Spider Monster. Yeah. Really mix it up. <laughs> yeah. But they were counting on Joseph Seed being their Doc Brown Spider Monster. You, like, you want us to hashtag him? Come on. What's the opposite of a Doc Brown Spider Monster? Mm, I don't know. The the ending you expect is the opposite, right? The the, the 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 something that just washes over you. You don't even remember. Yeah, you, you watch just get like another vehicle day. fly in the air. Yeah. It's like this time it's a Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> a Cadillac is a du- uh, the opposite. Or a train. Uh, real quick, who had the better trailer, Far Cry New Dawn or Rage 2? Mm. Rage 2. Really? Oh, that Rage 2 trailer was great. Why? Yeah. It zoomed around the map really quick, which I haven't seen a lot of open world games do, and I thought oh, was yeah. really clever, and I thought it was clever for Rage, because Rage is like, we'll show you the map, we don't care, like, that's not going to spoil anything, where uh, you're like, oh, that canyon, I didn't want to see that canyon. You know, what, you, know? you know what it was close to is that skiing game from Ubisoft. Right. Steep? Steep. Steep. Steep to the kind of same thing in their trailers. But it, I, this has a lot more, you know, yes, variety. That was yeah, one yeah. of my issues with Steep, was that it's just like, like oh, another snowy mountain, cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but that's, that's funny, I thought the Rage 2 trailer was really forgettable but they well I, and i know a lot of people in open world games hate the icons yeah like the people some despise that and especially from you know you uh well it's not ubisoft but uh uh a very ubisoft way to do open worlds but i just loved this like let's go through over here and it wasn't just like a cut to something else like it's like no you're actively the camera is moving so you can get a sense of like look how different the place where you're in now is the place where you were in before yeah. and look how you know how you travel to get there it was a surprisingly coherent trailer I feel like the problem that I have with this Rage 2 trailer and really a lot of Rage 2 at the moment is like its tone is is very loud and crazy and fun and that's exactly what Rage 2 is going for. But I feel like I have kind of felt the same watching every Rage 2 trailer and so it's not that what they're doing is bad or that they're doing it poorly, but that I, like hearing it in the same way for so long, I'm just kind of tuning it out at this point. Sure. And I'm interested in Rage 2. I can't wait to play Rage 2. But at this point, it's like, oh, yeah, 
that they're doing it again. Ian, can you remember a single moment from the trailer right now? Search your mind. Uh, I remember it zooming. I remember words coming up at the new locations. I remember there being like some scaffolding with a man standing to its right. Hey. I remember you sneak up the, on that guy. You ride up the elevator. A barrier that the enemies put I remember up. I the take elevator. the wing stick and it yeah. goes around the barrier and decapitates all the guys or just hits all the guys. That wing stick's so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you all hear that? Oh. oh, it sounds like it's podcast half time. The following are the official sponsors of Easy Allies for the month of December. Elfanis. Mango. Connor's Cure. Connor's Cure was created in honor of eight-year-old WWE fan Connor Michalik, who battled mellow, uh, medulloblastoma, a rare tumor that affects the brain and spinal cord. Connor's Cure is a foundation to support pediatric brain and spinal cord cancer research. Connor's Cure has helped raise nearly $2.5 million and assisted more than 400 families around the world. The link to donate is in the description. Easy A Weekly Clips. Do you miss the weekly Twitch clip compilations? Boy, do I have good news for you. They're back in a totally unofficial, but still pretty cool capacity. Check out what Cell Splitter calls very good. Just look for Easy A Weekly Clips on YouTube. iKeyless. iKeyless.com is proud to sponsor Easy Allies. If you need a replacement car key or remote, use offer code EZA at checkout for free shipping and 30% off of your order. Hogue Law, business law firm. Whether you're starting a business at level one, stuck fighting the dreaded fundraising boss, or finally cashing out with a well-earned high score, you need a good business lawyer at your side. And now, that good business lawyer's YouTube channel has spawned a new series. Like Help Us Out Hogue before it, Virtual Legality is all about Hogue discussing the law, games, software, and everything digital. Neither Ian Hank nor Kyle Bossman has commented on it yet, but when they do, <laughs> we'll make sure to take their comments out of context and place them right here. Mm-hmm. Check out the first three episodes of Virtual Legality at youtube.com slash H-O-E-G law. Sweet Justice, a sound design company from the southern shores of the UK. They've worked on some of the biggest AAA titles, the most refreshing indie titles, and collaborated with the best development teams in the world. And... Our mega sponsor, Jigarbov Productions. Are you looking for something cool for you and your kid, but do they, or you, still can't get enough of that there Minecraft game? <laughs> Press the store button in Minecraft iOS, Android, Switch, Xbox One, or Windows 10. Do a search for Jigarbov Productions and get some of the highest quality, downloadable content available, including mini games, adventures, survival challenges, and more. You can even buy Minecoin cards in stores and use them as the perfect present for your non-denominational gift-giving seasons. Just make sure whoever you gift them to knows that you want them to only buy Jigarbov things, (laughs) not the other stuff. (laughs) All of these links are available in the description. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Our pace is not great. Uh, If you ever do, like, running in high school and just, like... Like coaches like yelling at you, and it's just like, oh, I'm gonna lose this race. Uh, we have <laughs> you, a lot of games left to talk the about. Good, the, the, the yeah. best stuff at the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, we did. It, we got to talk I about the best stuff to first. I skip New Dawn, but you. Like, no, I think it. it's a big deal. I, I really do, it. And, and I think it's cool they announce it now, and it comes out February, right? Like we don't have to put up with New Dawn for too long. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They had true, too many true. previews for Far Cry Five. Yeah, and so like, I actually think like that's a really smart idea. And obviously, I love that Mortal Kombat's coming out in April, and they waited till now to reveal it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, love yeah. that kind of thing. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled was announced yeah. at the Game Awards. This is a remaster of Crash Team Racing with a lot of additions that we'll get into. Yeah, I mean, this is the this is the same vein as the. Uh, the Crash Collection and the Spyro Collection. Yep. Uh, so it's like really hugging that line of remake versus remaster. It's really a remake, but it's a remake where everything's exactly the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what I loved about this trailer is showing off the PS1 version first, mm. and then this transition into maybe it's most like a gorgeous level, the one with the like the Aztec pyramid. Uh, and it's just kind of a wow moment. Again, a live audience is going nuts, just like, like a gasp. Because it was pretty clear from the moment Crash Bandicoot was there at the Game Awards. It's like, okay, they're about to do Crash Team Racing. 
even like Activision ahead of time is just like something interesting is sliding <laughs> into the game awards. Like, okay, we know what it is. Stop this. Uh, <laughs> I think you can be cute with this. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, you're right. It is the kind Especially of game that you're cute with. Especially after crash already. Yeah. 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 And so I think like even still that moment of the trailer was surprising of just how good this game yes. looks. Because I'd say, I mean, I think it looks better than Sonic Team Racing. Yeah. Sure. I think so. Isn't that nuts? Not really. Why is that not nuts? <laughs> Why I mean, is that not nuts? Uh, Sonic Team Racing, I don't, like, it's not grabbed me at all. Yeah. Like, I've it, enjoyed it, Sonic Team Racing. I mean, I've enjoyed it all right. Why we're throwing Sonic not... Team Racing under the bus. <laughs> I have to make a comparison always. Wait, Sonic Sonic Team and All-Stars Racing Transformed? No. Transformed is great. Transformed yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And there's a new game coming out next year called oh. Sonic Team Racing. Oh, I thought we were talking about Transformed. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, Transformed is like, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm balance talking, restored. I'm talking about right. the game where you have to, it's like yeah. teamwork racing game. Yeah, right, whatever. Yeah. That game's not even out. And s- neither is Crash. Yeah, but yeah. whatever. Crash is out. <laughs> I mean, I, I had an old. okay time playing it at E3, but yeah. it was clearly very early, and I'd like to see more of it. Yeah. That's where I'm at. It but, just didn't feel like it. Is, it's not as grand of a game conceptually as sure. Transformed is. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like Transform had crazy stuff flying over, like the afterburner, you know, uh, aircraft carriers and stuff. And these just feel like very kind of safe track environments. Uh, one of the things I love about Crash Team Racing, if you're not familiar, uh, and you might not know Diddy Kong Racing either, but there's a story mode. There's mm. there's a, like an overworld, and there are yeah. challenges and boss fights. I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh yeah, it's actually a really cool game to progress through, single player wise. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. But the thing that we must discuss is. The online mode, it's like, okay, sure, put it online, but when they showed the online mode, they showed the biggest difference between this game and the Crash Team Racing PS1 game, multiple carts. And this is where I think Activision comes in. (laughs) This is where I think that there will be an online progression, that you have to work for new carts. Mm. uh, They might not even necessarily be in the story mode, they waited until they were talking about online to show off the new carts. And I think this is, might be where Activision becomes interested. Uh, I wonder if this game will be the same $40 that the Crash Collection was. And so that's hard to rationalize at the same time. It's just like, oh, this is one racing game. But I think it'll be something more. I think it'll be something bigger than Crashing Racing. Uh, are you alluding to, hey, you can pay for this? Stuff in Crash Team Racing? Yeah. I, like a, Maybe like a Battle Pass thing for a racing game, right? Yeah. I, I think that is a lose-lose situation. Why? Because it, it would be one thing if you're like, hey, we're making a new Crash Team Racing game. Mm-hmm. But Crash Team Racing, I think, a, a, a small but vocal audience has wanted for a very long time. They're finally getting it. They're finally bringing it back. We've already been treated to well-received remasters of Crash and Spyro. Yeah. And if you go and you change that or, or you pollute it, I guess, with that Activision way, I think people are going to be upset. I think if you if you're somebody that's been waiting for so long and this game is near and dear to your childhood, you're gonna feel like they're messing it up. They're inserting all this stuff. They're polluting your memories. You don't want it. And I imagine people will be very vocal about it. But all that's extra. You got the game you played ages ago, and then this online mode you couldn't even imagined back then. I mean, it depends on how they do it, right? It yeah. depends on how it, yeah. how it feels. Like, yeah, it can be extra, but if it's extra and it feels bad, I think people are still gonna be upset. I still think they're gonna feel like they're something was tainted. Sure. I, um, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, uh, I do wonder if it'll have a life. I wonder if it'll have a life beyond release, if it has even six months of planning behind it. Does it need to have a life beyond release, though? Because I feel like, like, Crash did so well. And then Spyro did. Right. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I think really that's what you need. You just kind of need that like, oh, yes, we want this so bad. We play it. We love it. And then we're done. And I think that's okay, right? I don't believe in Activision that way. Yeah. I believe in them like yeah. looking at investments. I believe in them like just priming us, laying down the butter. That's what I feel like they're doing. They're just slathering some butter all over the uh, like the slip and slide, and they're just waiting for us just to coast right into their microtransactions. That's that's my like impression of you know the business decisions they make. You know, I just it just feels like it's playing for f- with fire when it doesn't need to. It's like yeah. if you if you've done this and you've done it well and they've been successes, like why why do it? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I might I might be too paranoid. It might just be a complete fun package that's $40 and then we move on. I do think I think 
it's obvious a new Crash game is coming. Yeah. Maybe oh, even yeah. in 2020. Yeah. Right? I'm, yeah. I'm with you 100%. I, I think they're leading up to somehow. Yeah. I don't think you would do Crash Team Racing if you weren't also doing a new Crash game. I think yeah. that, I think Crash Team Racing, as as good as that game is, as much as it loved, it's, it's to keep the Crash mm-hmm. train rolling. Mm-hmm. And it's rolling, baby. It is. It's rolling. Uh, Which is crazy. It's yeah. great. That is crazy. Uh, well, you know what? I don't know. We did the NPD, Lifetime NPDs for PlayStation, and it it made it, it was crazy to me like how many balls were dropped. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean, though. Yeah. Like, Crash is a ball that shouldn't have been dropped, right. but it was dropped so long ago, and then they just left it on the ground. Yeah. It's it, like it was just one of the best selling games on the PlayStation platform, and then just you just lit that bowling ball clunk. Yep. Uh, I want to talk about this is not a game announcement. This is a character announcement for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate mm-hmm. that I think had the biggest see, buzz of the um, Game Awards event. Yeah, I yeah. think this was if you look at like Twitter, social media. I think this was the thing most people talked about. My heart. Yeah, and I don't understand how could how could a character announcement be a bigger deal than a new game announcement? Yeah. How could it possibly be? Because it's about the surprise, Kyle. Let's get into this. Okay, it's about so the surprise. put me in the zone. Put me in what I should, how I should have perceived this event. So a lot was happening. We got mm-hmm. Reggie on stage. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Hey, all your dreams will come true." Yeah. And uh, then we see Atlas appear on the screen. We see Persona Five. Minds start to ignite, thinking, "Okay, they're bringing Persona Five to Switch," mm-hmm. which might still happen. Yeah. But then you see that envelope. And you see the smash seal, and that's just a good moment. That's a moment where you just go, you just go, ah, oh, because they they built up to it perfectly. Yeah, it was just presented so well. It was a lot of dialogue before yeah. you see that envelope. Custom yeah. dialogue, baby, yeah. talking yeah. about the game awards. Yes, yes. Yeah. in character. Yeah. Like, Oh, you're going to the big show? Yeah, I don't remember a single line, but it was kind of like... I can't like, believe... You know, he's like, we yeah. did it, we're in. She's like, I can't believe you, you hacked into the Game Awards. Mm-hmm. We're like, we're stealing something from the Game yeah. Awards. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too. It started off with that with that hack, and we're like, this cyberpunk, what is this thing? You know, because it was very much like the, the Oh, E3 right, it was hack, Keely you know? talking mid-sentence, the, yeah. light, the lights went black, and he's like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So is this... It was just not something that you could have expected, really. No, you know, like we had, we had talked about why doesn't Persona Five come to the Switch, mm-hmm. but never in any conversation where we were talking about well, Persona should be in Smash Brothers. It just wasn't in any of those conversations that we've had. All of the speculation about who should be in that game, mm-hmm. and Persona wasn't in there. But it fits. Joker yeah. from Persona Five just fits so well. Yes, we can envision how fun it's going to be to play that character. Mm-hmm. Probably his persona coming out for final smashes and stuff. Uh, it's just it's the vibe of the trailer was so strong. Yes, it surprised me because maybe two or three podcasts ago we talked about the DLC and we talked about how Sakurai had said Nintendo gave me a list. I had to pick from Nintendo's choices for DLC. Nintendo picked that. <laughs> Nintendo pick Persona 5? Like, I'm surprised. And really, like, hats off to Nintendo and Atlas because if Persona 5 is coming out on the Switch eventually... It, it mo- is, right? Right. Like, let's lock that in. Right. <laughs> the more the more that I think about it, this is the absolute perfect way to do it. Because yeah. you have a bunch of people who have already played and many of them loved Persona 5. And so you get the Smash character announcement. And so a lot of people who haven't played it see that excitement mm-hmm. and then they play Joker and Smash and they get attached to that character and I just think about like the reason I played Fire Emblem on the GBA is because I liked Martha and Roy and Smash it's kind of like that sensation yeah. but amped up way more yeah uh, which is really really cool and so it like Smash all, or not Smash Persona 5 on Switch if that happens I feel like it kind of feels like a bigger deal than it already would be yes. because of this and yeah. I think that's genius mm-hmm. it also wasn't Star Fox it wasn't Metroid Prime 4 there were a lot of things that like people were right. thinking it might be and the fact that it wasn't any of that and people were still surprised that's what's got me yeah. the most hyped about it is it, it bodes well for the things to come, you know? Like, if this is yeah. the level, the caliber of characters and outside third-party stuff they're going to try to bring in, you know? But yeah. you can't... Yeah, the problem is you can't get better, so I don't know. Just ah. Solaire! <laughs> Solaire, dude! Yeah. It's going to be Solaire. Solaire is what I said. Common. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like one of them is from like some game that hasn't even been announced yet. Oh baby, you know what I mean? Like I, right. I just like whoa, Kyle. My, what? Where are you going with this? My mind's racing, Ben. Dude, my mind is racing by with with possibilities when it wasn't before. Can you imagine like 
like you just see this amazing trailer for a brand new Nintendo IP, and it mm-hmm. ends with, and you're gonna play him in Smash. <laughs> yes. Like, Holy cow. Yeah, man. That would be awesome. And Spider-Man's gonna be in there. Wolverine's gonna be in there. <laughs> I'll take him. I'll the take him. The T-Rex em. from Jurassic Park is gonna be in there. They put Ridley in. But yeah. It's not too big. I can yeah. see a T-Rex working out. The- Velociraptor maybe. Man, that's a hey, that's a good Smash character. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I just think that was cool. It was it was a surprisingly well received announcement. Persona Five is not the most popular franchise in the world, but but I do think it it speaks to Persona's rise. Yes. Yeah. Right, Ben. That that crowd would screech the loudest for that announcement. Yeah. Is nuts. That was a big old crowd that was sold out on that on that level. Like that's that's crazy. Um. We have more announcements, though. Oh, hey, let's talk a little bit about the Kind of Funny Showcase, uh, because that was just over an hour long, showed a ton of games, can't go through all of them. I plucked the two biggest announcements from that. Uh, first being uh, Judge Eyes. Judgment. Yeah. It has become Judgment. Yes. Uh, Judge Eyes is a game we talked about uh, from uh, the Yakuza team. Uh, Sega was putting that out in December. I guess it's coming out still this year uh, in Japan. Uh, has a, a U.S. release date. Uh, a window of summer 2019. Well, and then, of course, the most bizarre thing watching that in the showcase was everyone was speaking in English. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> English voice acting. <laughs> right. Which they haven't done since Yakuza 1. Yes. That is right. On the PS2. So it's crazy that, yes, this will, they're going all out on judgment. Yeah. Yes. Which, like, what, what, what a timeline we're in. We were at a point where we, like, begging and pleading for new Yakuza games, mm-hmm. and they're like, Here's this spinoff, baby, and it's in English. Like, that just feels good. Yeah. That just feels good. Hey, cool. Cool. <laughs> yes. I don't know how else to sum it up. Cool. Uh, uh, eventually, I'd like, maybe we'll get to where it is, Ben, where it's like simultaneous worldwide release. Yeah. December to summer is the best yet, though. If we're looking at, oh, like, we compare sure, it to Yakuza yeah. games. But again, thinking business, the the... I swear, like, the number one question I get on Twitter, or at least a very frequent question is, hey, man, you guys talk about Yakuza a lot. Don't mm-hmm. know where to start. A little bit intimidated. Should yeah, I do this yeah. or this, that or that? And everybody says different stuff, too. Somebody like Kiwami, dude. Right, Somebody right. like Zero, dude. Yes. Yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah, and so that happens all the time. And so I'm sure Sega is obviously very aware of that. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, hey, this is getting more popular. There's buzz. A bunch of people want to get into it, but they don't know how. We've got this spinoff where you can just jump in and here's English voice acting in case that's your deal. Mm-hmm. Seems smart. Yeah. It seems cool. Uh, uh, Sega, good on you. Um, pumped for that. Uh, the second biggest thing from the, the Kind of Funny Showcase, the, what they ended with, their one more thing, was that uh, the Walking? they had a trailer for The Walking Dead final season. Oh, yeah. Uh, episode 3 is coming January 15th, 2019. Way sooner than I think any of us expected. Yeah. Uh, along and with they that, also mentioned the bizarre detail that like it's forty people that are still working at the Telltale offices. Bloodworth, well done. I had, had a picture down. of all of them in the office, but yeah. it was forty precisely. Good job, Blood. Uh, uh, still not bitten, I think, or what was the? What's yeah, their look name? at you two. Yeah, yeah, still not bitten is the name of their development team. <laughs> um, I'm like too proud. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, they, they, they they then uh, there was a line in the trailer later. You hear her say, "She's like still not bitten." Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. like, yeah, and so uh, that that is continuing. Uh, it is, and they're still working in the offices, right? And it is, I think, more people than I expected to, from the old games. Uh, do you still feel like it's worth celebrating? Is it still like happy news? Yeah, it's like a relief in a way. It's yeah, a good it, way to phrase it's, it. Yeah, it's not exciting. It's just like, oh, thank goodness! Like they they get to finish it. And it gets to be the same people, not some weird. Some of the same people. Yeah, that's true. But, um, but yeah, so that's a lot, it's a lot better than it just like getting, you know, feel, you know, like what it felt like before is like, okay, here's the files and figure it out. Yeah, you're right. That it was a lot of the same people who were used to that game. And, and, and I do think that, uh, if Telltale games were buggy before, this one might be a mess. With a 40-person development sure. team. Well, actually, I think it's more than 40. I think 40 is what they took over from the old team. Um, but you're right, Jones. They showed the whole team, and it wasn't huge. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Hey, cool. That is coming so soon. Uh, neat announcement at the end of that show. That's cool. All right. So what I talked to the team about here, the panel, is that for the rest of these games, just want to go through them. If, you, if, if something grabs you, if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Otherwise, this, this is the lightning round. Okay. Uh 
Hello Games announced a new game, The Last Campfire, as a Hello Games short. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Which I've never seen before. I think it's a really good idea. I want to see more developers just make cool short games like that. It looked adorable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, watch that trailer for The Last Campfire. Um, we talked about a little bit. Super Giants making a... I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to call it roguelike. Whatever. I, I realize that that term is super broad, but if you die and have to restart, I'm calling you a roguelike. Um, called Hades. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw uh, 2D art, you know. Um, uh, it's installed on my computer. Oh, you got the you did that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ben, that's cool. Yeah. So how, you went how, to the Epic Game Store. Yes. You made I did. you made an account. I did. I yeah. will do this for Super. Were you able to wow, immediately cool. install the game, Ben? I was. I was. When Why, I bought Ashen, no. When I bought Ashen, I had to like restart my computer and then wait five minutes before the install button actually worked. It was weird. So I, I had think the, there was a I had the Epic Games launcher already on my computer. I opened yeah. it up. I went, Me I clicked too. to the store tab, clicked buy Hades, clicked install. Weird. I, I even ran it to test that and I ran yeah, fine. Yeah. So I think no, it, the cool. server must but have been just I haven't like played it yet. Smash up. has been yeah, how smashing. Could, I mean, sorry, dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Wildcard, the studio who makes Ark, announced a new MMO called Atlas, which is about pirates and monsters. Looks cool. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Also, it like, crazy. if it's good, it's just like, well, <laughs> sorry, other six pirate games. You know? Yeah, right. I mean, I do think they're primed for success. I, 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 Ark has been wildly successful, despite you know none of us having any awareness of it. Like, uh, I, I think that it just looks good, man. It looks cool. Uh, this was weird. Hashtag the Dread Wolf Rises, basically a Dragon Age announcement, but without really even giving a title right. out. Yeah, that was very weird. I think it was kind of cheap. Yeah, I thought it was lame. We were all like, okay, like title reveal and then it was like not even it was a hashtag reveal yeah it's just like uh, I, I think it's an okay reveal a weird reveal to do at the game awards yes <laughs> right. weird to bring the lights down and then that yeah, you know but whereas if that had just popped up on yes. you know at dragon age on twitter you know yes. oh cool yeah, you you're see right, that Jones? today and like the Big hashtag difference. and you're like i don't understand it it's like it's not for you it's for the fans it's for exactly. people who know what that is there was a lot of dialogue there that meant a lot to the and fans. it's again you, you compare like i am you know did not finish persona 5 i'm terrible at smash brothers i jumped out of my chair when i saw that envelope like, you know and like mm-hmm. you, the dragon age ghost there's that like one guy in the back Woo! yeah like, okay dude, it looks cool <laughs> you know and you know it, it was a band exciting and I'm, I'm you know i hope it's great especially after andromeda you know it's like you know we're all we're all it, that game, but again it's just not this game right like there, that game does not exist yeah, that's it is thing. design documents right yeah. now probably right like well i mean I'm, I'm with you but they've been talking about a new dragon age forever like yeah, for years, and they should have been working on a new one forever because the Inquisition did really well at the beginning mm-hmm. of this generation. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't necessarily buy the idea that it's just design documents, but yeah. it's probably too early, or at least, at least with the way things went down with Andromeda, like you gotta come out swinging, man. You yeah, can't I agree. Just weird <laughs> little teaser. Like, and the yeah. teaser's there because of Anthem. It is there to re- reassure everybody that you know, hey, look, we're still Bioware still cares about Dragon Age. That's what that whole trailer was for. But yeah, it, uh, it's just a band aid. It's a band aid. And I know we probably won't get into Anthem, but that trailer wasn't terrible. One of the new trailers that they showed. Wasn't, I don't know if I had seen the trailer. Wasn't but terrible. Okay. Just because it's you know it's that team. I'm, I'm, I'm we we've seen the gameplay. I've played it. It plays well. Brandon, like you are much more of a focus on story. You weren't here. But we had a word of the day Uh-oh. for the Game of the Awards. Oh, no. <laughs> the word of the day was intrigued. Yes. Oh, was yeah. anyone intrigued by Anthem? So intrigued. Well, we they said get, intrigued, get used intrigued. intrigued. Just about everything. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, I'll say the musical performance. That's what I was going to say. That Lindstrument, dude. Yeah. They have a nice theme to Anthem. I dig it. Uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. Uh, this is from Simogo, a mostly a mobile studio who made Device Six and Your Walk, two games I never played, but I remember. Oh, Your like, Walk, be- okay. Yeah, like being, you know, people love that. And so you know, my little cousin was like obsessed with Your Walk. I'm like, you're seven. Cool. This is a horror game. What That's a developed seven year old. Yeah. You know how oh, Blood said coming out swinging. Yeah. I feel like that's what Sayonara Wild Hearts did. Yeah, I want to read how they describe their own game from their own website. Sayonara Wild Hearts is a euphoric music video dream about being awesome, riding motorcycles, skateboarding, dance battling, shooting lasers, wielding swords, and breaking hearts at 200 miles per hour. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's very, like very uh, musical, uh, very flashy, very neon kind of game. It commanded attention. Yep. And it was something new. And it was a perfect Game Awards announcement. Oh, and I should say that that will be launching on the Switch. Started off with a little Switch click. 
Click. I like that with Beat Saber and Tetris Effect and now this, we've like evolved from Guitar Hero and Rock Band from like very serious thing happening in the middle of the screen and all the crazy stuff's around it that mm-hmm. it's like, well, I'm missing all of that. You know, like every now and then I'll be like, oh yeah, there's my character in Rock Band. Cool. And I love that like this new age of music games, like no, you're the, the coolest thing that's happening on screen is happening right in front of you. Like you are in that moment. I get it's you. It's a dude. cool evolution of the genre. It's a nice observation. Uh, Scavenger is a game that was announced from Midwinter Entertainment, uh, which is made up of former 343 people who apparently made the War Zones mode of Halo 5, made their own little studio, uh, Scavenger, which is like basically uh, we're dropped in this scenario. We got to fight waves of enemies together. They even call it like puzzles. Like we got to solve enemy puzzles together. But then once that's done, we got to kill each other. And that's basically how the game was described. I uh, had a trailer as well, CG trailer to check out. Um, the Pathless from Giant Squid, who made Abzu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a really cool game. Oh, Jones is bobbing. Yeah. What, you into the, the Pathless? Yeah. Why? Uh, speed, I think, was a big deal, showing how fast this character runs. It's like a ninja, so right? I'm, I'm looking really at this environment, yeah. like, yeah, not the most detailed thing, but it's cool that, like, I'm not, they're not expecting me to kind of slowly trudge after, like, Horizon Red Dead, like, these beautiful games. Yeah. You know, like, no, the, the point of this game is that you can jump off and ride your eagle down, and, and you have your bow and arrow, so it's all, okay, all yeah, ranged the combat, oh, yeah, so this game looks targets awesome. are moving very fast, you're yeah. moving very fast. Yeah, yeah. Seems, seems like the kind of game I'm not going to need to put 40 hours in, but it's just going to be this really cool... And I don't um, think you will. Abzu is super approach. short, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great style. Really, really just, you know. I, I, you know what? And it was the same team as Abzu, right? Like, yeah. I just, like, for the little time I did play Abzu, your control over that character swimming was just, I picked it up in five seconds. Yeah. Like, oh, it's controlled so well. So seeing this, you know, with ranged combat, like, it, because uh, not a lot of combat in Abzu. It's mostly exploration. Yeah, so it, this kind of seems combat, like the next yeah. evolution of their style. Uh, Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey was apparently already announced it was not a game I was aware of uh, Patrice Desolet, uh, the if I pronounce that wrong you will know him as the creator of Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. uh, made a, a game where you were like the, the earliest versions of the human race from 10 million years ago I, I feel like we were joking about the word intrigue, but I cannot think of a better description for my feelings on this game. Yeah, because <laughs> it like it doesn't look good, right? Right. It's no. pretty, it's a grody looking you know, game. You know what the weird thing? Huh. <laughs> because somebody had linked some things that I had like scanned some old videos the other day. This reminded me of the Adventures of Darwin. Oh, dude, yeah. Do you remember he's like yeah, that on first 15? Game. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Don't <laughs> this remember. reminded me of Spore, concept. actually. Yeah, Spore. A little bit of Spore, yeah. 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 And I think that maybe that's part of the reason why it doesn't. Well, it's not a looker, you it know? It makes me worry because wasn't it the Game Awards like two years ago? There was like some, it was like Wide or like... Wild? Wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wild's been gone. Dude. What happened to that? Yeah. So, fingers crossed, <laughs> like this actually happens. But yeah. it's like, I just was watching Prehistoric Man fight against the elements. And I'm like sitting in the Game Awards audience like... Why am I having flashbacks? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like, but the idea is so good. Through. It's 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 yeah. It's, intri- it's intriguing. It's intriguing. Uh, I don't know if it's something I'll actually play that much because it seems like there's a lot of thought process that goes into. Like I think the the turning point in that trailer for me is when they're like ganging up on a saber toothed tiger, and it's like wow. I wonder. I hope there wasn't like an hour of just walking around before this happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious like how much how much action there is because they really wanted sure. to focus on like the climbing and the running and the spears. Well, what they focused on was you developing tools. Yeah. The, yeah. the eras increased and so you became more like you you, you, you can see these, uh, what do we call them? They're not Neanderthals because that's even later. Like Lucy is like a Neanderthal, right? I don't know. Okay. What it's probably like Homo habilis or whatever. I can look it up. Whoa. Sure. Uh, anyway, like you see them become smarter and you, the the tools become cooler. Yeah. I, I there's a concept there that yeah. it, that is. Hey man, if you pull that off. But I think the the thing I wonder about the most is like what is the gameplay loop of this like? Yeah. Like, do you go through like all of these generations in like an afternoon and like, all right, well. That run sucked. Like we went extinct, and so you know I have to like like FTL or something. Where you just like keep doing it again until you get to whatever the ultimate humans are. Yeah, and the how ultimate does this game humans. Work? Yeah, it it ends with Lucy, so you don't you never get to be like a naked man. But yeah, we'll sure we'll develop piece by piece. Um, was. I mean, there were even more game announcements beside that list that we just went through there. Was there anything else that stood out to anybody? Maybe even moments from Game Awards, from uh, Kind of Funny Showcase that you want to discuss. 
Too much. Nothing too much. Top of my head. Great. Cool. Then it's time for love and respect. Love and respect. This is hard every week. Uh, we got to do one this week, and uh, this one is just, I've never seen anything like this. Is this is positive crazy. or negative? I'll let you decide. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need that. I'll find uh -oh. it later. I got you. Uh, thank you. Hey, allies. Last week on their blog, Capcom announced that it's going to start rolling out optional in-game advertisements in Street Fighter V, and players who don't opt out will be rewarded with a limited amount of fight money. The ads themselves will all be centered around in-game purchases and promoting the Capcom Pro Tour, if enabled. They will be displayed during loading screens, as backgrounds in tournament stages, and even on the character's clothing, with all of the fighters to receive a new ad-style costume. With <laughs> While advertisements are nothing new in AAA games, like Final Fantasy XV's uh, Cup of Noodles Quest, for instance, this model is usually reserved for the likes of mobile and or free-to-play games. Do you see this more as a harmless experiment, or would you worry about what sort of future precedent it may set? While the example is both, uh, while the b example is both optional and limited to Capcom's own products, do you think there is a future where we'll be watching Netflix ads to earn V bucks, double XP, or even exclusive skins in games? And if it were to happen, how would you feel about that? Love and respect, to beating yes, down Brian. Of course, this is, they're not even. This is like a test run. It's a test run, man. The, if they're sucks. they're running ads for their own things. They're not they're not making any money off of that. They're just. Trying to see what people do. Yeah, and you got to see it, dude. It's it. It's just Ryu with logos on his gloves, his his gi. You've got to be kidding me. No, and <laughs> it's just it's so wrong. It's so nothing it's Ryu would ever wear, right? This. It's the wrong game. And so, uh, I do wonder, and but there is an incentive. If you're willing to put up with that, you get more in-game money for the work that you put in. Mm. Isn't that nuts? Here's my counter to that. Okay. Instead of putting up with that BS, I could just play many of the other better fighting games that are currently out right now. <laughs> Wait, what's better? Let's list them. Tekken 7. Okay. Better. Mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Fighters, mm -hmm. Better. Soul Calibur 6. Better. To me. Yeah. Like, I already get annoyed watching Street Fighter V and seeing them do the ads over and over and over again for you to get whatever BS special Capcom Cup outfit and stage there is. It reeks of desperation. It reeks of a product. It doesn't reek of the passion or fighters rising up or whatever the hell the tag is. Mm -hmm. it just sucks. There's other fighting games out. Mortal I don't Kombat have to deal with this. Out, so. yeah. yeah. You're next. Uh... <laughs> Like, it does bother me that it's uh, opt out as opposed to opt in. You know, maybe just a thing should appear right when you start. Just like, hey, ads will give you money. And you say yes to it. You know, it's like, what a shock that would be to see Ryu wearing logos on his clothes suddenly. It's just, I, I think there is an inherent coolness to Street Fighter and that cast. Yes. When I, when I think about video game character designs, to me... Like, you can't get more iconic than Street Fighter. Some of that art, like, still makes my soul sing. Looking at mm -hmm. those pictures and those characters. And, like, th the music as well. Like, there is there is the this, like, a Street Fighter aesthetic that is, like, untouchable when it's at its best. And you're telling me you're taking that and you're like, oh, we put an ad on his gi. It just, mm -hmm. it just throws that in the gutter. Like, it... Street Fighter V, at this point, like, it just doesn't even, there's, it doesn't feel like there's a soul there. It just feels like it's trying to make money in this, like, super naked and aggressive way, and it's trying out all these different things, and, like, on some level, I feel sympathetic. I feel like you need to make a game that is, like, always on. You need to support the competitive scene, and that's really difficult. I just feel like a lot of the ways that Capcom have, have done it have been, like, in the most ham-fisted, non-organic ways, where they're, like, they're, they're constantly trying to force things, and people can smell it, and they just, I don't know. This, this to me, is, like, the, the difference between the, like... The dream of the hyper-capitalist nightmarish hellscape versus the reality of the hyper-capitalist hellscape where it's like, 
ideal situation is they put ads all over the insides of airplanes and it makes my tickets cheaper, Mm -hmm. right? Like I'm served a bunch of ads and as a reward for that, I fly for less. But really it's just they put a bunch of ads on and charge you more. And like, you know, (laughs) this is... This yeah, is just the, that. The tall people tax, yeah. Right. Like, like think if you're a lap street. If I want to sit in a seat where my, my knees aren't against the back of the next seat, I have to pay more money. Whoa. Like, think if you're a lap Street Fighter V fan, okay? Okay. And, and you're like, like, there's some part of you that, that wants to be playing Street Fighter. Yeah. You hear this. To me, that's not like, ah, better jump into that game. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, so it will end after Capcom Cup, right? But... I think we all agree it's a test. Do you believe this will work? Do you think that we'll see other games try out this thing? Will you see Capcom try out this kind of thing again? I'm curious to ask Daniel Bloodworth because you said it was the wrong game. What's the right game? I thought of Fortnite immediately, but talk about a game that doesn't need to do this. Right, <laughs> right. Like they're, they got they got money, fine. they're fine. Yeah. But I'm trying to think like what's the right game? Because like there's gotta I mean, be some crackdown. Like, well, I don't care. Put if some I, stuff if I go buy some big ad of Mountain Dew, like I, I don't know. Like that's that that's not gonna whoa. Oh, the the, the integrity of crackdown is ruined, right. you know? Like yeah. there's gotta be some things that like it's it's fine, you know, like mad these sports games, you know, where it's yeah, like that's yeah, it. sell those at they're in the stadium, you know, that that's actually playing. Like, like I, I I'd actually kind of get a kick out of it. It was like a, a, a an ad for a new TV show or movie that just came out. If especially if I'm like in the mindset of playing through a season, you know, so like this game's actually actively changing as I'm playing it. Yeah. And I'm like, if if it's like if it's like it's like, oh, we recreated this actual NBA player. Cool. We recreated the stadium. Cool. And there's ads. Wait a minute. It's breaking the world. Like, no, if you went to that stadium, you'd see those ads anyway. But so when like, I'm playing a basketball game, I'm not as an audience member, I'm as a basketball player, man. It's, still see the ads. It's everything. You <laughs> see, but you also see the audience too. It's the Brandon to, to along me, those like lines the, the flavor. Yeah. If it, like I could see it maybe maybe working in a new final fight where like okay, yeah. you're just you know Whoa. you're scrolling through this stage presumably assuming it would work that way and like if if there was a billboard in this city and it had Mountain Dew on it or something like I, that probably wouldn't bother me too much you know I think that's something that you're doesn't just smash an actual Mercedes with a pipe Sure, yeah, that would be fine. But like in a one-on-one fighting game where right. it just feels like you're staring at the ad and it's distracting in in a genre that demands so much attention as it is. I don't know. Yeah, I I I think it was an experiment that they had to try. I think it'll sour people away. But this idea of opt in, opt out ads, I do believe will continue. I don't think this is the end of opt out ads. But like, Street Fighter Five is not. It doesn't. It's not on top. It doesn't feel like it's on top. I think it's on top. I do, I just when you. When you have something like Street Fighter Five, yeah, and you're not getting the most number of Evo attendees, like it just doesn't. I mean, to me, this is just me. Maybe I'm wrong about this. It doesn't feel like it had had the energy that Four had or the commanding presence that Four had. It just sort of feels like it's there. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, you know, where everyone's like Four is the best fighting game that you can play right now, and obviously other people disagreed with that at that time, but less so than today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, interesting scenario. I really had no, like you have to go. They're they're just proud of it. You go to the Capcom blog. There's Ryu wearing this marketing clothing. It's it's I've never seen anything like it. It is weird to see marketing where all we have to do is just get in front of their eyeballs. It's like well, you gotta like it too. <laughs> you right. gotta you gotta yeah. make me want to get the thing. And it is possible that you could put a lot of effort into putting something in front of my eyeballs. And I I hate you now. <laughs> yeah. Like, congratulations, you did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Well. Okay, we'll see. Put a little flag on this podcast. I want to hear this conversation two years from now <laughs> because I, I really do think it's going to continue. I have no idea. However, it is now time for Or Wars. Four, four, four. I would swallow my pride. I would choke on the rinds. <laughs> but the lack thereof would leave me empty inside. I would swallow my doubt. Turn it inside out. Find nothing but faith in Or Wars. Or Wars. Uh, who wants in? Mm. Oh. All right. Oh, Ian, were you first? He said, mm. "No, nah, he's he's got me. He got me. I'll come in." in okay, there. you can have second. <laughs> All right, I Jones. want one that I can actually do well on. Okay, because this one. No, you can't do that. <laughs> Greg Miller or Tim Geddes? Oh! 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 Tim Geddes. Why? He introduced me to Greg Miller. Okay. Tim was first. Tim right. Tim walked up to me and and knew who I was. <laughs> that, and... that was threading the needle right there. <laughs> wow. I like it. I like it. Uh, Ian. 
Okay. Snow levels or tank levels? Ooh, snow levels. Why? Because they have, they've got mood, they've got danger, plus you can do really cool stuff with stealth and tracking. And tank levels always just seem kind of like bullet spongy nightmares sometimes. They're harder to get right, I think. I mean, obviously there are some great ones, but snow levels on the whole I prefer. Okay. Uh, who's next? I'll be in. Okay. Simon Belmont or Richter Belmont? Richter Belmont, uh, Rondo of Blood is an incredible game that introduced so much to the series. How can you imagine cra- classic Castlevania without item crashes now? Uh, also, he's in like the best cut scenes of any Castlevania game. You watch oh. those anime cut scenes and you don't get hype. Mm. Richter Belmont. Oh. Okay. Blood, you got to make a strong case. Okay. For a sneezing or coughing? Sneezing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because uh, sneezing number one is kind of bizarre because like your whole body sort of shuts down for a minute. Like your heart <laughs> stops and your eyes have to close, and it just and it just takes over. You can't do much about it. And the other thing that really like <laughs> fascinates me about sneezing, sure, is most people like when they sneeze, they uh, they have like this set number of times that they have to keep sneezing. <laughs> Like, this person, like, every time they sneeze, they sneeze three times. But this person, every time they sneeze, they sneeze, like, four times. Or they sneeze twice. <laughs> it's just a strange thing. This seemed rigged. This seemed rigged. This, this, rigged. Seemed, this does seem... I don't, I don't know anybody that can go off at the drop of a hat on sneezing like that. Who knew that he had locked and loaded a sneeze <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That wow. sounds like it's been billion for years. Yeah. <laughs> also, hurricane-level winds, I hear, from sneezes. Whoa. Unsure if that's true. I mean, clearly, Bloodworth wins Or Wars. Yeah. That, that was yeah. Or Wars. Woo, woo, woo. I would swallow my pride. I would choke on the rinds. But the lack thereof would leave me at the inside. I would swallow my doubt. Turn it inside out. Find nothing but faith in Or Wars. Or Wars. Let's talk just a bit about Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. Only one more Or Wars, by the way. Mm. Oh, oh, I love Or Wars. One more Recruit Me, one more Or Wars coming up. It's got to be a good one next week. Uh, uh, Patreon.com slash Easy Allies is where you should go if you are interested in supporting the Easy Allies in all that we do. Podcasts, live streams, reviews, previews, lots of crazy things uh, that you may and you probably are interested in at least one or two. So go check out that website. Good stuff, man. Good stuff right now. What's good What's you got good a right cup now? of Jones where I go into more detail about the studio that we just acquired. Ooh. You got Fancy 15, a, a, an exclusive series that has two more episodes and now as of today meaning the day that we recorded this podcast Mm -hmm. you have a special preview of mysterious monsters which is our 55k goal a game show hosted by mike huber and produced by ian hank yeah is it just me or to get like real greasy in here oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah yeah (laughs) little layer of grease bring up two gettys and like these automatically just start getting sticky (laughs) (laughs) uh we have to see if maria survived uh it is december she has a 60 percent chance of survival maria here we go. She died. Oh, <laughs> and you cared. You ca- did. You cared more about that role than any role I've ever seen you make. We left her. We left her behind. We turned around. She's gone. Yeah, just for a second. I, that's one I really wanted. To. That that yeah. one hurt. Yeah. Recruit yep. me hurts. I guess that's the whole point. <sighs> and one of us wow. said she's gone, and the rest said who? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a question. Uh, is is did the Rouge Rogue get away? Will we ever pick oh. up that quest? I, Rouge Rogue doesn't have a problem with us, right? We didn't really adventure. At we had all no beef with, with the Rouge Rogue. Yeah, yep. I think we're good. Yeah. Hmm. Brutal. Yeah. What's it? Ontological or ontological inertia? Like that could be stolen from us at any second. But yeah, I guess we're not after the Rouge Rogue. Okay. Sorry to end it on that note. Uh, Daniel <laughs> Bloodworth, <laughs> you were the winner of War Wars. You get the right and response to the t- that sneeze rant. <laughs> that was legendary. You broke him. You, broke him. <laughs> um, you get the right and responsibility to share your Twitter handle with the world. You get to promote any Easy Allies video you would like to promote. You get uh, the final word on anything you've disagreed with or want to reiterate. Just hopped into your head. And you get to sign off with your trademark sign off. Um, yeah, so my Twitter is uh, at dbloodworth2. Uh, for my final word, uh, I would like to implore everybody uh, to take some time to play Smash Brothers with the items on. 
<laughs> <laughs> Don't be too serious about things. <laughs> Check some things out. Have some fun with some random things. Let some explosions happen. It's no big deal. <laughs> um, and then for uh, a video, um, I can't spoil anything. All other thing I, I, I'd say is to, to keep an eye out on Ian's stuff. He's actually got multiple things that are really fun coming up. Mm. Uh, Ooh, so, thanks, yeah, love. keep keep an eye out on, on what's rolling out over the break. That was the best final word <laughs> <laughs> in the podcast history, GT time or otherwise. Cold-blooded. <laughs> uh, and your trademark sign-off. Yes, uh, we'll see you before the next Blood Moon Rises. They have like this set number of times that they have to keep sneezing.